Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 announcement of the Lance and Elena Calvert Awards for Undergraduate Research. My name is Maggie Farrell. I'm the Dean of Libraries at UNLV. We are so pleased to be able to present the Calvert Awards and honor the work of undergraduate students at UNLV. Though we are unable to be together on campus for an award ceremony, I am pleased that technology enables us to honor these outstanding UNLV students. These students have demonstrated exceptional use of libraries resources and the critical application of information in their research projects and class papers. As we share details and hear more about the wonderful work of this year's winners, I hope you and your families are healthy and well during the pandemic. We look forward to gathering next spring to continue the tradition of recognizing the role of research in undergraduate education at UNLV. These awards are made possible through the generosity of Lance and Elena Calvert. They recognize the important impact of undergraduate research and the valuable role that libraries play in supporting all forms of research and scholarship. Thank you, Lance and Elena, for establishing the endowment that funds these awards. The Calvert Awards continue to be a highlight for all of us in the libraries as we showcase the outstanding research happening at UNLV. Now, for the announcement of the Lance and Elena Calvert Awards for Undergraduate Research, I will turn it over to Associate Professor and Librarian, Roseanne Matola. Roseanne? I'm pleased to announce the winners of the 2020 Calvert Award for Undergraduate Research on behalf of the University Libraries. This year, we have winners in three categories, Emerging Scholars, Creative Works, and Advanced Undergraduate Research. In the Emerging Scholars category, we recognize projects that are completed in the one, two, or 300 level courses. This year we have one winner. Her name is Vanessa Booth, and she was selected for her paper, Nevada's Secret Killer, Opioid Deaths. Her faculty mentor is Dr. Caitlin J. Saladino. Winning the Calvert Undergraduate Research Award has really meant a lot to me and has opened my eyes to the potential that I have as a student-based researcher. And so originally starting this opportunity, I didn't see myself actually leveling up with all of the other applicants in this field because I felt that my research as a freshman didn't necessarily matter as much. And so winning this award has really inspired me to not only seek research in public policy, but among other disciplines. And so it has been really valuable in shaping me as a person and as a student researcher. Just to provide a little bit of background information about myself, I'm currently a freshman at UNLV who is pursuing the Brookings Public Policy minor. And in my Urban Studies 101 class that is about introduction to Brookings and public policy, I chose to research and address the ongoing Nevada opioid crisis through a public policy lens. And essentially my research took on the characteristics of a problem cause solution approach to the ongoing crisis. And although it's a very multilateral problem, there are many factors affecting the opioid crisis, I chose to focus on on Nevada's address to treatment and treating those who are low income and who are opioid ad addicts essentially. And so really the significance of my findings was realizing that there are many inequities in Nevada's address to the opioid crisis and the way they choose to allocate federal funds. And so essentially what I found was that only three out of the 15 opioid treatment centers in Nevada are covered by federal funds. Meanwhile, the rest are really put off to fend for themselves through public funds. And I also found that poverty and unemployment have a high correlation with opioid abuse, and essentially that there's gonna be a rise in the opioid crisis in the next few years because of the coronavirus, how the coronavirus is racking the economy with job loss and unemployment. And so really my findings, I think, showcase how there are many flaws in Nevada's opioid crisis address and how it needs to be further evaluated. Today, I want to thank some very important people who contributed to my success in this research process and moreover helped me earn the Calvert Award. First off, I'd like to thank Urban Studies Librarian Susie Scarl. Thank you, Susie, for your constant support, guidance, and encouragement throughout this research process. And without you, I wouldn't have learned of the many wonderful resources that the UNLV Library provides when posed with evidence-based researching. Next, I'd like to thank Dr. Caitlin Saladino, my Brookings Public Policy Professor. Thank you, Dr. Saladino, for your constant support of your students and always stressing the importance of public policy research and that student research is extremely important. 
Without you, I wouldn't have found of the many important flaws in Nevada's address to the opioid crisis, so thank you. Next, I'd like to thank Lance and Elena Calvert for making this award possible. Thank you for creating this award to really recognize student-based research and the importance of it, and also providing financial reward for those who are in the research field. I'm very honored to have received this award this year, so thank you very much for making it possible. This year, we are pleased to recognize two students for a group project they completed across two semesters. Their outstanding exhibit utilized elements from special collections and archives and is recognized in our Creative Works category. Join me in congratulating Lauren Pelushai and Ann Savage. Their faculty mentor is Dr. Susanna Newberry, an assistant professor in the Department of Art. This work is significant because it explores the built landscape and environment of Southern Nevada, and it helps to show how people interacted and lived in Western frontier towns. It also shows how their experiences can be very similar to the ones we have today. And this work will stay with the materials I researched and hopefully give insight to future researchers. It's so great to get recognition for this project and to get it out in the world for others to see and learn from, and also to possibly use as a jumping off point for more research related to this. Annie Savage and I put a lot of time, effort, and interest into this for an entire academic year, and it feels good to see that the finished product is worthy of this award. It's a positive end to my senior year at UNLV. My faculty mentor, Dr. Susie Newberry, was instrumental in the progress and completion of this project. Uh, I learned so much from her about how to distill numerous materials into something meaningful and coherent. I'd also like to thank Sue Kim Chung, Peter Michelle, and Aaron Mays for answering tons of questions and everyone else in Special Collections that took an interest in this project. Uh, I'd also like to thank Lance and Elena Calvert for generously making this award possible. And last but not least, Annie Savage, my collaborative partner, for bringing her unique vision and her infectious enthusiasm. Hi, my name is Annie Savage and I'm a recipient of the Lance and Elena Calvert Award at UNLV. I have a few prepared remarks I'd like to share. So. The significance of this work um, was learning about the history of Las Vegas and Nevada. I grew up here, but I didn't really know much about it. And I'm really proud that the work I did will be part of the history of the photographs I researched. Um, I know it will help future researchers. I'm also pleased that we'll bring attention to the Special Collections and Archives section of the library. Um, if you're a genealogist or a historian or an architecture um, buff, there's just so much information up there. It's also a very quiet place to go and study um, and look at the things they have there. If you want to research primary objects, they've got a lot of material there for you to have um, a look at. So this all started um, with taking an advanced gallery practices class in the fall of 2019 with Professor Susanna Newberry. Um, over the semester, we gathered information from primary objects and um, proposed an original exhibition, which was postponed due to the global pandemic, but I'm sure we'll have a chance to put it up. Um, this spring, we continued working on the project as an independent study. Um, so I'll say the class led me to photography, studying primary objects and history, and, um, and continuing to learn from Professor Newberry. I really enjoyed that, taking a second semester with her. Um, she has a passion for research and a passion for photography that's really inspiring. The excitement for me lay in finding the clues and chasing leads and um, discovering as much as I could about a medium that I had no familiarity with. I learned a lot about old cameras and the history of photography and about old Nevada and the place that we live now. It's a visual place and there was a lot happening in the early 1900s and the founding here. Let's see. So researching in the photo archive, it's given me inspiration and a new skill set and um, more, a deeper appreciation of the art of photography. There are a lot of people I'd like to thank as, um, <laughs> it sounds like an Oscar speech. There are a lot of people I'd like to thank for supporting me while I did research and, and put together this exhibit. Um, I'd like to thank my husband and my children. 
I'd also like to thank the Calverts for rewarding undergraduate research and for their continued commitment to supporting the library uh, collections. Um, my thanks go out to my classmates, Lauren and Emily. They, um, they undertook this collaboration with me and their long suffering and patience is much appreciated and I loved bouncing ideas off of them and learning from them. Um, they're talented, gracious young people and it's been thrilling to do this work with them. I'd also like to thank Professor Newberry for her direction and her support and her wit and her wisdom and motivation. Taking classes with her has intensified my um, enjoyment of little details. Um, I'm much more proficient at reading, text, at reading texts with intent. Um, I, I don't think I really knew how to study before and the little things are what makes it interesting. Um, she helped me realize my penchant for going um, on a goose chase or dump, jumping down a rabbit hole aren't bad things. Um, she guided me back around to my purpose and taught me those things are worth the time. Um, I'd like to thank the Department of Art. Without these classes that I took, I'll, none of this would be possible. The technical services librarians in special collections and archives have my eternal gratitude. Um, that would be Erin Mays, Sue Kim Chung, Carla Irwin, and Peter Michael. Thank you so much for putting everything together and um, supporting this project. Um, also, the technical services librarians. The archive is digital and physical. Um, if you want to go online and look at the materials, they've scanned them in. They've dictated them. They've got it, a lot of information online and it took hours and hours of man labor for that to happen and it's it's amazing and I'm so appreciative that that was done. With COVID-19, I wouldn't have been able to finish this project without the digital component of the archives collection. Let's see. Um, yeah, last but not least, I'd like to thank the selection committee for their time and consideration in choosing my project. Um, it's an honor to be recognized for my hard work. Um, it's definitely validation for me and my choice to go back and pursue a degree of, uh, in art. The resources that were indispensable um, as a full-time student who also has to be a full-time mom, um, a place to focus is priceless. So the library's special collections is a haven and a quiet place. Um, so that was wonderful. Uh, and when I couldn't be on site, I still had access. And the library's um, collections are vast and all the access they have to databases and um, materials is, is wonderful. So what does this award mean to me? It means I can do it. Um, I'm not a traditional student. Um, I'm raising a family um, and with a recovering alcoholic. I am bipolar. I have ADD. Um, they're not small obstacles, but I overcame them. It took extra time and effort and extra patience from the librarians and my classmates and my professor. Um, and from my family, and I thank them from a very deep well of emotion for being my cheerleaders and examples. This means that I can research, I can contribute, and I have proof. Thank you so much for honoring me this, with this award. We are also thrilled to announce five winners in the advanced undergraduate category. These excellent research papers and theses come from several different disciplines. First, I'd like to announce Michelle Meg Brown as winner for her paper, Politicizing a Private Choice. Her faculty mentor is Dr. Kean T. McMahon, an associate professor in the Department of History. Good morning. Uh, my name is Meg Brown. Um, my project was called Politicizing a Private Choice, How Interest Groups Draw Political Identity from Roe v. Wade and the Abortion Debate. My work is significant as a contribution to the existing 
historiography on abortion politics. Um, historians and political scientists have written extensively on the topic of abortion, but very few have explored the issue of identity politics and the way in which uh, interest groups use abortion to establish their place in American society. Conservative Christian Americans have used pro-life as a way to establish themselves as separate and different from liberals and immoral masses. The idea for this project was uh, began in 2019 of last year, in the fall, um, under the mentorship of Dr. Joanne Goodwin for her course in Historical Research Methods, History 251. I am deeply, deeply humbled to receive this award. Um, I want to thank Lance and Lita Calvert for, uh, uh, for their gracious endowment and for encouraging undergraduate students to achieve excellence. I want to thank also the Calvert Committee for recognizing my work and, of course, everyone at Lead Library, the, the, the very helpful, patient, courteous staff who is always on hand to help students. I am eternally grateful to Dr. Joanne Goodwin for her mentorship in the early development of this project. And I am, of course, most of all, very thankful to Dr. Keen McMahon for his guidance and feedback throughout the research process. This project would never have come to fruition if it was not for him. Um, uh, finally, I want to mention the, the resources that the library provided me that has proven um, indispensable in my work. The ProQuest newspaper archives, the Hain online law journal, the Nexi Uni uh, database, part of LexisNexis, and as well as the physical library collections at LEAD. Winning this award means a great deal to me. It means that I have contributed to UNLV's larger community of academic learning. And I sincerely hope that whoever reads my paper will have a walk away with a new understanding of abortion and a new respect for female privacy. Thank you so much and uh, please stay safe during the COVID crisis. Thank you. Next, we are thrilled to recognize Santiago Gudinho Rosales, a student in the Honors College and the School of Public Health, for his thesis, Factors Associated with PrEP and PEP Uptake Among the Latinx Population. His faculty mentor is Dr. Melva Thompson Robinson. After a year volunteering at clinics and hospitals around Las Vegas, I witnessed firsthand some of the disparities that the Latinx face in obtaining health care. Being a student in the Honors College, I was able to address a portion of what I had seen through an Honors Research Senior Thesis. However, what I didn't know when I first started this journey was how rewarding the process was going to be. My thesis now has the potential to contribute to the betterment of Latinx care, and it was only because I sought to find answers to the questions I had. While I would have wanted to thank those that aided in this project under different circumstances, there were a number of people who aided in my project. However, before I get to those, I want to first thank Lead Library for having the resources and the databases that allowed me to get an understanding of where society was in terms of the HIV prevention strategies, PrEP and PEP, which were the medications I focused on. Without these tools, I could not have synthesized the concise comprehension of what was out there and what still needed to be explored on. I would also like to thank Lance and Elena Calvert for making this award possible. It is truly awards like this one that allow students like me to hone in on future research. And I am humbled by the fact that I was chosen uh, for this reward, I'm sure amongst a competitive pool of applicants. I would also like to thank Dr. Melva Thompson Robinson, Dr. Andrews, Dr. Menengados, and Dr. Dodge Francis for constantly pushing me on ideas that needed more intention and for giving me their encouragement and letting me know that I was capable of doing it. My project, has grown to mean so many things to me. The Latinx community is one in which I identify, so to know that I'm aiding my people and helping others serve them is humbling. Latinxes are disproportionately affected by the HIV epidemic, and my thesis addresses solutions which can help aid in this problem. As I move on to the next steps of becoming a physician, I hope to continue to build onto my work 
until one day I am also a provider for my community. Thank you again to all of those who made this project possible, and I hope that I can have deep conversations regarding my thesis and its implications, along with the minutia of it all, with all of you in the near future. Until then, thank you and please stay safe. We recognize Joni Lang for her paper entitled Art and Terror, Vergang in Heights be well Tigung, in relation to the Red Army faction. Her faculty mentor is Dr. Paul Wirth, a professor and chair in the Department of History. Our next award goes to Honors College and Geoscience student Alex Newsom for his work on the analysis of Crypto Tephra at Whitney Mesa Nature Preserve in Henderson, Nevada. His faculty mentor is Dr. Eugene Smith, Professor Emeritus in the Department of Geoscience. Hello, my name is Alex Newsom, uh, pronouns they, them, he, him, and my project was the analysis of Crypto Tephra at Whitney Mesa Nature Preserve, Henderson, Nevada. So the significance of our research project was we provided the first precise time constraint for the sediments of Unit X in Las Vegas formation. And this unit underlies a lot of the Las Vegas Valley and not much research has been done about it. So being able to provide that precise date will help future research. So what, is, what got me interested in the topic? Well, for me personally, throughout my undergraduate experience, I've really realized there are certain subsets of geoscience that I, I'm really drawn towards geochemistry, volcanology, petrology. And so that what really drew me to this project, but also the team I'm working with, they were the team that discovered crypto shards in a different unit of this formation. And they really wanted to pursue that and see if they could find more in this formation in other units. Who really contributed to this success was my whole research honors thesis committee um, Dr. Lisa Manigados, who I've known since my first year, and she's been a big role model this whole time. Dr. Simon Jowett, who's helped me go through a lot of obstacles. Dr. Rachel Johnson, who, huge help, and she, she knows so much about the field and has been able to really propel this. And Dr. Eugene um, Smith, he's, he's the best advisor I could have asked for, and he has provided so much guidance and information and tutelage, and it's just, he's really helped me grow. What resources were indispensable were the two labs we used on campus, Clagger and Emil. Without them, the, lit the research would literally not have been possible. Also, the lead library and its, its database and how it's connected to other databases accessible for students was definitely pivotal for this research, because with without it, I couldn't have done any of the background research or the literature review. This award is, is really meaningful for me because um, it really showed, it was very validating and it showed what you, what I do can be, is significant and it matters. And because I, like many other students, I kind of had the mindset of, oh, I'm just an undergrad, but literally in two weeks I'm graduating with two degrees and I'm not going to be just an undergrad anymore. I'm going to be a college graduate. And this award kind of helps solidify the, the fact that what I do matters and is significant and we all just need to remember that as we keep moving forward is we matter and we can keep doing research that can be used to further other research and help propel our, our, our world. So thank you for, for everyone who, who made this possible and, and for recognizing um, our research. Thank you. Our final award goes to Alia del Carmen Solano Patricio for her paper, A City on the Front Lines of an Epidemic, the Opioid Crisis in Las Vegas. Aaliyah is a student in the School of Public Policy and Leadership. Her faculty mentor is Dr. Caitlin J. Saladino. So I first started investigating the opioid epidemic here in my hometown because honestly, someone in my life was addicted to opioids. And more than that, it's, it's a really prevalent issue. Addiction doesn't discriminate. You see it everywhere you go. So this project is significant because policy traditionally has focused on restricting doctors from prescribing opioids, which is sound policy generally, but it doesn't necessarily take into account that demand for opioids doesn't stop there. 
the illicit market is there to supplant that demand. It's especially significant to Nevada because I also found that there's an urban-rural divide in terms of demand for opioids as well as in terms of access to treatment for addiction, which is inadequate both in rural Nevada and urban Nevada. So I spent the better part of the fall semester last year researching this topic. Uh, I spent time interviewing experts and nonprofit organizations. I also went to a lot of research consultations at the Lead Library. Uh, but the bulk of my analysis I really couldn't have finished without the collaboration between the Nevada Department of Health and Human Services and the Southern Nevada Health District. Uh, they collaborated to create the database, which I used to track rates of prescriptions and uh, opioid-related deaths and incident overdoses. I feel honored and proud to have been selected for this award. Obviously, during the current circumstances, the news was especially significant. It makes me feel grateful that the number of hours I put into this project resulted in a publication that hopefully informs and hopefully makes an impact someday. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Dr. Caitlin Saladino of Brookings Mountain West and the Lindsay Institute for nominating me for this award. I'd also like to thank uh, Brookings scholar and drug policy expert Dr. Vonda Felbob brown who has served as my research mentor and inspired this project really since the last time she came to lecture at UNLV about the opioid crisis. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to thank Susie Scarl from UNLV Libraries for patiently seeing me through this process. Wasn't it inspiring to hear all of these amazing stories from our student winners? The Calvert Award for Undergraduate Research is important to the university libraries because it is a celebration of student achievement and an opportunity to acknowledge all that it takes for us to support and enhance undergraduate research. I am so pleased that we are able to recognize the work of these exemplary students, as well as their faculty mentors. These awards are possible because of the generosity and vision of Lance and Elena Calvert for endowing this award. Without their support, we would not be able to offer these student awards and celebrate their tremendous achievements this way. Since the Calverts endowed this program in 2006, we have recognized the work of 50 student researchers. This year, we add eight new researchers to that category. In addition to the Calvert family, I would like to acknowledge the librarians and faculty who served as judges. Thank you for your time and expertise in selecting our winners. It is a very short turnaround time from the submission deadline to the judging deadline, and we thank you for your work. This year, there were many applications of very high quality from departments all over campus, and our judges were very conscientious about the decision-making process. We are so pleased that we are able to celebrate eight students with their outstanding work in all three categories, emerging scholars, advanced undergraduate, and creative works. We look forward to seeing you in person for the Calvert Award Ceremony in 2021.